In this video, I will explain what is an isometric drawing and how to draw isometric. I will explain it in simple steps so that it's easier to understand. First, let's draw a 2D grid with x-axis and y-axis. The x-axis is parallel to the horizontal, while the y-axis is parallel to the vertical. So this 2D grid is made of squares of 1 by 1 centimeter. Now, let's draw this grid again, but this time the x-axis is at 30 degree angle from the horizontal and the y-axis is also at 30 degree angle from the left side. For engineering students, you will use the t-square and the 30 degree angle triangle to draw the x and y-axis. Now let's add the z-axis for the height. The z-axis is going to be vertical line. I will extend and repeat the lines of each axis more time just to fill the paper. We will call this an isometric grid. Each line on this grid is one centimeter length. As we mentioned before that the 2D grid is made of squares. So this isometric grid must be made of cubes, right? Can you see the cubes? The entire grid is made of those overlapping cubes. Now let's use this grid to draw a cuboid of dimensions 2 by 5 centimeter and a height of 1 centimeter. I will start by drawing a rectangle of dimensions 2 by 5. Then add the height using the vertical lines of z-axis. Also notice that this cuboid can be drawn in a different position like this. Let's try another shape. This shape, for example. Try to imagine this shape as two cuboids, one on top of the other. Let's start by drawing the first cuboid, which is 2 by 2 centimeter and 1 centimeter height. Now let's add the second cuboid on top of it. This is the base of the second cuboid. So we will add the height of 1 centimeter to it. Now we will remove the construction lines and hidden lines. Remember that you can draw the shape with any steps you like. For example, you may start by drawing the side faces like this. Then add a thickness of 2 centimeters along the y-axis. It all depends on how you imagine the shape in your mind, but in both cases the final result is the same. Let's take another example. This time we will use both the 2D grid and the 3D isometric grid at the same time. This isometric grid is without the z-axis, which is the vertical line. Now let's draw any shape on those two grids, maybe something like this. Now in the isometric grid, we will add a thickness or height for this shape. Using the z-axis, which is vertical lines, let's add a thickness of 1 centimeter. Some of the lines will be removed as they are hidden and cannot be seen from this view. Or instead of completely removing the hidden lines, we can draw them as dashed lines. This is the basics of isometric drawings. Understanding this is essential to progress to the next level of drawing more complex shapes, and it will help you understand and visualize orthographic projection as well. The isometric grid is very useful for practice and improves your ability to visualize 3D shapes. I added a link in the description for a PDF file of the isometric grid, so you can print it and use it for practice. In the next videos, I will explain how to draw more complex shapes, how to draw a circle in isometric view, how to draw a cylinder in different positions, how to draw arcs or fillets, and much more. In the previews video, we learned that in the isometric view, the x and y axis are drawn at 30 degree angle to the horizontal, and you will use the t-square and the 30 degree triangle to draw them. And the z-axis is vertical line, 
Also, you will be using the T-square and triangle to draw vertical lines. But in order to make this video easier to understand, I will not use those tools. Instead, I will be tracing the lines on this isometric grid. So whenever I draw a line like this, you already know that it is at 30 degree angle to the horizontal and a length of three centimeters. And a line like this is a vertical line with a length of three centimeter as well. Now I will explain how to draw a circle in isometric view and how to draw a cylinder in different positions. A circle in 2D is just a circle, but in 3D isometric view, the circle looks like an ellipse. To better understand why it looked like an ellipse, when you look at a cup of coffee, for example, you can see that the top of the cup is an ellipse shape. But if you look at the same cup from a top view, you can see it as a circle, but you can't see the height of the cup. But please keep in mind that there is difference between human eye view or perspective view and isometric view. I will explain this more in another video. Now the question is how we can draw this ellipse. It is very simple and I will show you how. Let's draw a circle of diameter four centimeter. First draw a square four by four centimeter. Now divide this square into four parts like this. In the 2D view, all the interior angles of the square is 90 degree. While in the isometric view, there are two obtuse angles and two acute angles. I will refer to those two points as the two obtuse angles. Now using the obtuse angle, connect two lines like this. Do the same in the opposite angle as well. Now using the compass and the obtuse angles as the center, draw two arcs like this. Now using those two points as the center, draw two arcs like this. That is it. Simple, right? Now I will repeat those steps, but this time I will draw the circle in two different positions on those two faces. Those are the three different positions of a circle that you will need in isometric drawings and the method is the same in all of them. Now let's see how to draw a cylinder. We will draw a cylinder of radius four centimeter and a height of five centimeter. Like before, I will draw a square, four by four centimeter. And this time I will add a height of five centimeter. So now the distance between those two squares is five centimeters along the Z axis. Now using the method I just explained, I will draw a circle in both squares, the top and the bottom. Finally, we need to connect those two circles to form a cylinder. But first, we need to find the connection points or tangent points. By connecting those two acute angles, we got those two points. Those are the tangent points. Now we can connect them to finish the cylinder. Let's remove the hidden lines or draw them as dashed lines if required. The same method is used to draw a cylinder in the other two positions. Another thing to keep in mind when drawing cylinders of smaller height, that the construction lines may overlap. Just make sure not to get confused between the lines. In this video, I will explain how to draw round corners. So instead of having sharp corners like this, we will add round corners with a specific radius. It is very simple and easy. But before we start, there is another point that I want to explain. We already know from the previews video that the X and Y axis are at 30 degree from the horizontal, and the Z axis is a vertical line, and you will be using the T square and triangle to draw them. Now, how can we draw a perpendicular line to each of those axes? For the X and Y axis, we will use the triangle like this. And for the Z axis, we will use the T square. Now, after you know this information, we can move to the next step of drawing the round corners. 
We will draw this shape in isometric view. A rectangle, 5 by 4 centimeter, with two round corners of radius 1 centimeter. First, we will draw the rectangle, 5 by 4 centimeter. Now for this corner. We will measure 1 centimeter of the round radius on both axes. Now using the method I just explained, of how to draw perpendicular lines. Draw two perpendicular lines at those two points. Now using the compass and this point as the center, draw an arc, like this. For the second corner, the method is exactly the same. Measure one centimeter on both axes. Draw the perpendicular lines at those two points. Now draw the arc. As you can see, although the method is exactly the same for both corners, yet those two lines are much longer than those. The reason for this is because those two angles are different. This angle is obtuse, while this angle is acute. Now let's add a thickness or a height of two centimeter to this shape. I will start by drawing the rectangle without the round corners, at a distance two centimeter along the z-axis. Now for the first round corner, we need to move those three points, a distance of two centimeter along the z-axis. Now let's draw the arc. We will do the same for the second corner. Now we need to connect those two arcs, but first we need to find the tangent points or connection points. From the center point of the arc, draw a horizontal line using the T-square. This is the first connection point or tangent point. Now the hidden lines will be drawn as dash lines. Now I will summarize all of this in three simple steps, given this shape. At this point, I will draw a round corner of radius 2 cm. Step 1. Measure 2 cm on both axes. Step 2. Draw the perpendicular lines. Step 3. Draw the arc. Notice that this is the z-axis, which is a vertical line, so the perpendicular to it is a horizontal line that was drawn using the t-square. Now how to draw a shape like this? I will call this an inverted round corner. Can we draw it using the method I just explained? Well, the answer is yes. Let's see how. We will draw an inverted round corner of radius 2 cm at those two points. First, measure 2 cm on both axes. Draw two lines like this to form an isometric square. Now extend those two lines. Now imagine drawing a round corner like before, at those two red lines. We will draw the perpendicular lines, then draw the arc. Those red lines are only imaginary lines, and you don't have to draw them if you want. But make sure that you are using the correct angle when drawing the green lines. If you got confused, then just draw the imaginary lines. Now let's draw the other inverted corner. Measure two centimeters on both axes. Draw two lines to form the square. Extend the lines. Draw the perpendicular lines. Now draw the arc. To finish this shape, let's add a thickness of 1 cm. For the center point of the bottom arc, it is at a distance of 1 cm from the top center. Now do the same for the second arc. Let's remove the hidden lines. 